Hi guys and welcome back to another video now today what I'm going to be bringing you is a video where we discuss the fact Niall Canavan has left Bradford City to join Barrow for an undisclosed fee now if you do go on to enjoy today's video please make sure you drop a like on it if you could try and hit 50 likes on today's video that would be massively appreciated subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already get your post notification bell as well so you never miss a video of when I upload and make sure as well to let me know your thoughts on kind of departing down in the comment section down below share the video around with your family and friends as well now obviously I'm a little bit behind on all the stuff that happened on deadline day today is going to be a double upload day so if this video say goes out at 2 o'clock which I think it should do there will be a new video in 6 hours time at 8 o'clock so whenever this video goes out just remember in six hours time there'll be another one coming out for my thoughts on Luke Hendry joining on a free transfer from Hartlepool so make sure you drop a like on today's video subscribe if you are new as well because it really was not ideal selling our club captain two and a half hours before the deadline day you know before the, the transfer window closed and then we didn't replace him now, obviously, the benefit to me recording this after deadline day has finished and the transfer window is fully closed, you know, we're not going to announce a signing on the Tuesday because I'm recording this on Wednesday morning, is we know we just simply haven't replaced Niall Canavan. Luke Hendry is a right-back. He might have played centre-half for Hartlepool every now and again, but he is a right-back. He's probably going to replace Cousin Dawson. Derek Adams doesn't seem to like him whatsoever, but... I mean, Derek Adams has said there wasn't a breakdown or a fallout. Uh, he said that after the match against Leighton Orient, but... It does seem that way, to be honest. Obviously, after the Crawley game, Derek Adams in his post-match interview basically called out Cousin and Dawson, Cousin and Dawson, Cousin Dawson, and Niall Canavan for their errors, you know, costing us the win in that match. It's not the first time this season that we've seen Derek Adams criticise a player in a post-match interview and then leave the club earlier on in the season when we played Crawley away from home. It seems that every time we, we play Crawley, Adams likes to have a, a little dig at some of the players. You know, the interviewer after the Crawley match away from home back in September was like, you know, Ollie Crankshaw came off the bench, he got an assist, I thought he did well. Derek Adams goes good well done I didn't then a few days later he sold to Stockport so he needs to stop doing that because it was probably our best young player at the club obviously he didn't come through from the academy but he's quite young he's on a longer term contract who is well I don't want to say he has forced him out the door but it does seem that way and now he's, he's done it again with club captain Niall Canavan obviously Pawdy has since replaced him with the armband which which does make sense you know from the times that Canavan hasn't been available whether it's been through injury suspension etc Pawdy has stepped up and he has done that job and I think he's done very well we saw that last night but we did also see Jan Songo in centre half I don't think it's the end of the world but He's not the tallest, is he? Well, he's about six foot, which is not really tall for a central defender. I mean, Leighton Orient were a very big side, and even Pawdy struggled at times, and he's about, what, like 6'3". I just don't think you can have Pawdy and Songo as your centre-backs for the rest of the season. I think they're both very good. I think Songo is more of a midfielder, to be honest. I don't think he's awful in centre-half, but the fact we haven't replaced him is absolutely criminal. You know, not replacing your club captain. I don't think Canavan has been great this season. I think he has made quite a lot of errors, and I... I was someone who was like, well, when he was suspended, I was like, well, it's not the end of the world, but we don't really have any backup options, to be honest. Kelleher doesn't look up to standard. Derek Adams has an agenda with not playing the young players, apart from really Cousin Dawson, and he's absolutely had to. It, it Reece Dornan doesn't look like he even gets a sniff these days, so it just doesn't really make sense why we've sold him if there wasn't a breakdown, there wasn't a fallout. If we have a look at the articles both clubs released, Bradford City obviously tweeted at half past eight, on Monday after, well, Monday evening, saying breaking news, we can today confirm the permanent departure of Niall Canavan, who joins Barrow AFC for an undisclosed fee. Uh, the article does then read, Canavan departs for Barrow. The centre-back heads to Cumbria after a year in West Yorkshire, having signed in January 2021 from Plymouth Argyle. Canavan made 33 appearances for the Bantams, scoring one goal. That was against Stevenage in our 4-1 win against them. At the start of the season, he wore the captain's armband during the current campaign. Bradford City AFC would like to take this opportunity to thank Niall Canavan for his efforts as a Bantam and wish him the very best for the future. Obviously, Barrow then tweeted at the exact same time, saying, breaking the Bluebirds have today completed a deal to sign experienced centre-back Niall Canavan from Bradford City for an undisclosed fee. Mark Cooper has today completed a deadline day swoop to strengthen his defence with the signing of experienced centre-half Niall Canavan for an undisclosed fee from Bradford City. The 6 foot 4 inches defender has agreed an 18-month deal with the Bluebirds. Obviously, he was out of contract with us in the summer. Looks pretty unlikely that he was was not going to get another contract to be honest you know Simon Parker tweeted saying he was under the impression that he wouldn't have been offered a new contract in the summer so maybe that's why he's left you know for a little bit of security for his family and all that sort of stuff uh, but he brings an enormous amount of EFL know-how to the Barrow squad having played over 300 senior games a former Republic of Ireland under 21 international Donovan has been um, Donovan Donovan 
Um, how, how, how has this article been up for nearly two days and they've still not corrected that? Well, it's, I think it's meant to say Canavan has been a mainstay in the Bantam's backline since moving to the Utility Energy Stadium last January. However, Barrow were able to agree a fee with the West Yorkshire outfit in order to pave the way. For Canavan's deadline, they switched to the Duns, Hell Sta- Duns Hotel Stadium. Having been part of Bradford's academy during his younger years, it was with Scunthorpe United that Canavan made his name, signing professional terms in 2009 and going on to play 200 times. For Scunthorpe's first team. In 2016, a successful loan spell at Rochdale turned permanent and he spent two seasons at Spotland before earning a move to Plymouth Argyle, where he was a key factor in their automatic promotion from League Two in 1920. After making just short of 100 appearances for the Pilgrims, Leeds born Canavan made a move back up north to rejoin ambitious Bradford and he's been a regular part of their rear guard since then. Canavan has been handed the number 27 shirt at Barrow and he's set to link up with his new teammates later this week ahead of Saturday's home game against Barrow. Now, obviously, as I said, play. 31 times scored once he did all right in the year that he was here I think he did a lot better for us last season um you know we really did miss him when he wasn't playing last season obviously I had to wait for his opportunity to get into the side I think he, his debut was against Exeter cousin Dawson came off and you know Connor went to right back and Niall Canavan came on and since then he pretty much was a mainstay in the side unless he was injured or suspended and that has been a problem he's had a, a couple injuries where we've gone Oh, what are we going to do here? Usually, we we did play... At the start of the season, we definitely played a lot better with Niall Canavan, but you could tell that he's starting to age and mistakes are starting to creep into his game. You know, We've seen a few times this season where he's given away needless free kicks, he's fallen over... Um, He's one of them, like, very composed sort of defenders. I don't think I've ever seen him put a slide tackle in. You know, he tries to, like, try and actually defend without tackling or he, he likes the shield it's very rare that you'll see him put in a tackling you know he loves heading the ball he, he's proven that he can be composed on the ball but a, a lot recently every time the ball would come to him he'd just aimlessly clip it down the line and it wouldn't go he'd kind of go like in between our left winger and our striker and no one knew who to go for the ball and he just kind of gave the ball away quite a lot or he'd take far too long on the ball and like what we saw against Sutton he'd obviously get you know the ball taken off of him and then they'll go through on goal and then he, he took him down completely unnecessarily it's happened a few times this season where he just takes far too long on the ball he's obviously a big lad you know he's a bit of a unit um I think we will miss Canavan you know I think his influence in the dressing room I think it will definitely be missed it's obviously a shame to see him go but from the outside looking in it does look like there has been a fallout you know it's not the first time Adams has come out in a a post-match interview and had a go at one of the players so it makes sense obviously a longer term contract as well for his family undisclosed fee obviously I I don't think it'll be all too much I don't think we paid all too much for him last uh, January and obviously I don't think we'll have got all too much for him we probably have made some sort of a loss but it might have been 10 or 20 grand all that sort of stuff so probably not all too much to write home about it's just a shame that no money was reinvested like we were promised in the January transfer window we've just got six loans in and only you can only have five in a match day squad so it just doesn't really make sense to be honest if we'd have replaced Niall Canavan I would have been all for it because I don't think he's been great this season at all I think he's made quite a lot of errors to be honest with you I think Pordy is definitely the much better of the two which you know, we need to tie some of these players down to longer term contracts you know Pordy, Vernon, Sutton, uh, potentially Callum Cook I know some fans don't really rate him uh, recently but that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video if you have enjoyed a like as always will be massively appreciated if you could try and hit 50 likes as I said at the start of today's video that would be absolutely class subscribe if you are new as well we are now on the road to 6,000 subscribers so make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already get your post notification bell on as well so you never miss a video of when i upload and make sure as well to drop a comment in down in the comment section down below what are your thoughts on niall canavan joining barrow for an undisclosed fee from bradford city share the video around with your family and friends as well as i said there will be a new youtube video coming out in about six hours time so between seven and eight something like that i will be live over on twitch when it does go out so just make sure you have your post notification bell on so you don't miss that thank you for watching have a great rest of your day and i shall see you all later on tonight for another video peace